Experts have recently been claiming some stuff that just sounds way out there. It sounds insane. They're saying that nuclear fusion rockets could launch a new era of super fast space travel, enabling human beings to just fly to Mars in incredibly short periods of time and changing the way we look at the entire universe. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. Doing this every day, it's rare that I find some crazy kind of new information like this. But to be fair, there's been a lot of advancements in nuclear fusion. The United States, not Germany, as they claim, bizarrely, the Germans claim they're ahead of the US in nuclear fusion, but obviously the evidence says very clearly otherwise. The United States are leading the world with nuclear fusion. They're the first and only country to actually successfully produce fusion in terms of getting more energy out of the fusion process than they had to put in. Uh, the point is that we have basically cracked the fusion code as a human race. So what's the future of this? What does this mean? What kind of implications does this have for the world? Could this mean massive, cheap energy? Well, not so fast. It's going to take a long time for that to happen. I think personally, solar, wind and battery storage is a more likely commercial way for the world to go. I think that's pretty much the way we're trending. Now, there will be places around the world where nuclear fusion does make sense, where there's not a lot of wind, not a lot of solar, uh, and other problems and issues to deal with. But when it comes to rockets, nuclear fusion could be pretty much the only real solution. Sandwiched between a print shop and an auto parts store on an industrial estate in Bletchley, a group of engineers are constructing a rocket engine that will run hotter than the sun. That's what nuclear fusion does. If successful, it will cut journey times to Mars from months to only weeks and herald a new era of about interstellar space travel, which could be what we need considering Mars is a fair bit colder than the Earth, but the Earth is heating up at a much faster rate than what we all thought would happen. This could, at some point, potentially save the human species. After more than a decade of developments, the core technology still remains untested, but a UK startup called Pulsar Fusion claims to be on the cusp of creating the world's first practical nuclear fusion rocket engine. And if this is true, then SpaceX might be interested. Harnessing the potential of nuclear fusion has puzzled scientists since the 1950s, though most of the focus has been towards figuring out how to use it to generate electricity not how to shoot us around space. The process involves mimicking the same natural reactions that occur within the sun in order to produce near limitless energy, offering what some have described as the holy grail of clean energy. Independent.co.uk says that last year, researchers at the Lawrence Lavermore National Laboratory in California achieved a net energy gain in nuclear fusion for the very first time in the history of mankind using lasers to fuse two light atoms into a single one in order to release more energy than they put into the device. Physicist Arthur Terrell described it as a moment in history, claiming that controlling the power source of the stars is the greatest technological challenge humanity has ever undertaken. The feat, known as ignition, marked a major milestone towards making it a viable energy source and reignited interest in the field, which has suddenly exploded. Therefore, so has investment. Even Bill Gates himself, who by the way, I don't particularly think is a credible source for uh, new information in renewable energy, but he may be a nuclear fusion, has been investing heavily into this technology. But scaling up the technology from laboratory experiments to building a commercial nuclear fusion power station is still a long way off. What may come first, according to Pulsar Fusion, is a nuclear fusion rocket capable of blasting people and cargo and dogs and whatever else you want to take around the solar system and beyond. The favorable conditions of space, it offers a near perfect vacuum and extremely cold temperatures 
means the difficult process of containing super hot plasma within an electromagnetic field could be much easier than on Earth. That said, while this does sound probable, in fact, it's not probable, it's a, it's a foregone conclusion that we will have nuclear fusion powered rockets traveling through space at some period in time, I still won't be putting my hand up to become a guinea pig on the first few flights. Looking at the new small reactor designs being developed in the UK, it is conceivable that these could be used to power space travel, said Carl Whittle, a professor of zero carbon and nuclear energy materials at the University of Liverpool. Such a power source could enable an expansion in exploration within the solar system, with the potential to extract resources from bodies such as asteroids. The booming space industry propelled by renewed interest from government agencies such as NASA and the emergence of private firms like SpaceX, uh, others claim Blue Origin to be on the same level, but I would say that's ridiculous, means there's been significant investment and research into nuclear fusion rockets in recent years. Humanity has a huge need for faster propulsion in our growing space economy, and fusion offers 1,000 times the power of the conventional ion thrusters currently used in orbit, said Pulsar Fusion founder Richard Dynan in July after announcing his firm had finally begun construction of an eight meter chamber that he hopes will form the engine for the first nuclear fusion rocket ever built. In short, if humans can achieve fusion for energy, then fusion propulsion in space is inevitable. We believe that fusion propulsion will be demonstrated in space decades before we can harness fusion for energy on Earth. So why is that? Why would it be harnessed in space before it could be harnessed on Earth? The theoretical top speed of a rocket is around half a million miles per hour. That's 800,000 kilometers per hour, 800,000. So nearly a million kilometers per hour. That would allow spacecraft to reach Mars in less than 30 days. Current rocket propulsion technology takes seven months to make the same journey, exposing astronauts to harmful health risks like space radiation and extended periods of microgravity. That said, SpaceX says that their rocket could actually reduce that time significantly, but nowhere near as much as what a nuclear fusion rocket could do. Pulsar Fusion has already secured funding from the UK Space Agency and the UK government to develop its nuclear fusion propulsion system while also having some revenue streams from existing products it has previously developed. The company claims it will be profitable by 2025 through the manufacturing of technologies like half-effect thrusters, which are mainly used to maneuver Earth-orbiting satellites, but can also serve deep space robotic vehicles. The startup recently announced research partnerships with the University of Michigan and Princeton Satellite Systems, an aerospace company, and announced plans to begin static fire tests of its direct fusion drive nuclear fusion rocket engine next year. An in-orbit demonstration could then follow as early as 2027. The self-sustaining fuel supply could theoretically provide both the thrust for a spacecraft and the onboard electricity needed. NASA is interested in a variety of deep space destinations, such as getting to Jupiter in one year, Saturn in two years, Pluto in four to five years, said Stephanie Thomas, Vice President of Princeton Satellite Systems. A single one megawatt direct fusion drive engine can handle any of those missions. That is mind-blowing. It's a massive task though, and one that has proven too daunting for the current leaders within the private space industry. Elon Musk describes nuclear fusion rocket engines as a great idea, but SpaceX has no plans to develop the technology, at least not publicly, well, not quite yet anyway. Other companies and research institutions are working on nuclear fusion and recognize the potential of using the technology for space propulsion, but are more focused on realizing its potential as a terrestrial power source rather than an intergalactic fuel. There are three main challenges for building a nuclear fusion rocket. 
The first difficulty is general diffusion, which is getting a very high net energy gain, Dennis White said, a professor of nuclear science and director of the Plasma Science and Fusion Center at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. The second obstacle is a special difficulty of propulsion. Particles that result from fusion have very high velocities. So using fusion fuel particles in such a system and releasing them out the back of the rocket could result in the loss of unburned fuel. The third challenge relates to achieving the correct power to mass ratio. This is probably the biggest challenge. This is the key metric when it comes to the efficiency of a rocket. Despite these challenges, nuclear fusion is currently the only technology that we know of that could allow humans to leave our solar system this century. The location of Pulsar Fusion's headquarters, it is only 200 meters from a clothing store, seems like a bit of a strange and unusual setting to achieve this kind of incredible endeavor. But it wouldn't be the first time that Bletchley has seen implausible feats pulled off that changed the course of human history. Now, this may all sound kind of insane, but artificial intelligence was said to be a pipe dream 20 years ago. Now, we don't yet have artificial general intelligence, but most experts who completely wrote it off 20 years ago now say we're almost certain to get there within the next decade. With this ability, can we build fusion rockets? Absolutely. The question isn't can we, the question is simply a matter of when. But let me know what you think on this in the comments. Thank you for watching.